Mel B is known around the world as a member of the Spice Girls, but she's also known as an advocate and author. Her 2018 memoir, Brutally Honest, bravely recounts the domestic abuse she suffered. Well, now Mel is sharing more of her story. She's opening up about her life now in an expanded edition of her best-selling book, so happy you came to see us, Mel. Well, thank you for having me. You know what? I always love you too. We Every love time you, you come, you've, you've changed, you've grown. People who've read this book were like, I know Mel, but things have happened since then. You've evolved. Yeah. How have you yeah. changed since the last printing of oh, this book? I mean, the last time, well, this book was released in 2017, yep. and I wanted to kind of update everyone because a lot has happened since 2017 to 2024. Sure. You know, um, I, I moved in with my mom in Leeds <laughs> during the pandemic, which was hardcore but hilarious I how was that by the way interesting <laughs> I, I had to leave la so the best place that i could go to was to, to live with my mom and i just separated from my very abusive 10-year yeah. marriage so the best place was to you know rekindle yeah. everything with my mom and my family my mom's one of seven because when you've been in that kind of abusive relationship you know you are you kind of separated from your friends your family yeah. your close ones because that's what the abuser does so I went right in at the deep end. I was doing Wembley Stadium with the Spice Girls and then going home with my mum, very humbly living in a little bungalow with my kids. Oh. But it, it really helped us build our relationship and oh. that's what I explain in these extra three chapters yeah. because I think people think once you've left your abuser, oh, you're fine now, that's it. No. Well, it's not. You literally have to piece yourself back together, you know, because when you've, when you've been in an abusive relationship, you're full of guilt and shame, and it's something that nobody really wants to talk about, and I'm brutally honest. Yeah. So why I want to help survivors and help them, first of all, understand that it's not their fault, and to get help and actually be kind to themselves. And to not go back. Yes. I think and to not go back. Because but that's it's easy that to happens. go back. Yeah, because, yeah. you know, even though you're controlled, literally, who do you turn to? Because you've been separated from your friends and family. You, you kind of are left completely alone and yeah, traumatized and yeah. yeah so you need to be able to kind of piece yourself back together with help and with support and also I feel like some of that rhetoric that you've heard for 10 years mm -hmm. Yeah. All of a sudden, that voice is inside of you, and you're yeah, saying these definitely. things to yourself that you would never yeah. say to anybody else. Exactly. How did you get rid of that? Well, I mean, trauma, you know, from abuse will always be there. So yeah. I've, I've got to live with it side by side for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. So I, I've learned different tools. You know, I was fortunate enough to be able to afford therapy. Yeah. But sometimes therapy, talking about it, makes you relive it yes. again and again mm -hmm. and again. Traumatizing. So I did a lot of alternative therapy, like EMDR. I had this um, trauma transcranial brain stimulation thing. I mean, I really did go full on. And I talk about that in the book because, you know, trauma's awful. Yeah. And if you've been in an abusive relationship, that's what you're gonna have to deal with. So I, I kind of, in the book, you know, explain the different tools and t just to say, it's okay to feel not okay because yeah. what you've come from is horrendous. Well, you're trying to pull it out by the root so that it doesn't yeah. haunt you day and night. But yeah. one of the tools you've used since you were a kid, a teenager, is Reiki. And I think yeah. people hear that and go, ooh, what, what is that? Yeah, we so kind of think. Mumbo, hippie, but, jippie stuff with but crystals. But we're in, so what, we're in. We love that kind of stuff. So, well, A, how would you explain it and how did it help you? Because you had that tool throughout yeah. all these good and bad times. Yeah, I mean, I decided to study Reiki when I was about 19, which is right when the Spice Girls started to be quite famous here yeah. there and everywhere we had like number ones in 37 different countries wow. and I found Reiki I mean Reiki is just about energy really yeah. and it's just about making yourself feel grounded and making yourself feel less insecure and safe yeah. and I think the safe word is the most important word so I've kind of used that throughout my time and my kids are fed up of it they're like mom <laughs> I can feel the energy stop sending it to me now so yeah it's quite interesting we, we kind of wish you we, were our mom we, because we would put you to work <laughs> okay, wait. So this is something that I feel like has changed because when you first wrote this book, yeah. Yeah. which wasn't that long ago. No, 2017, 2018. Yeah, I mean, so sometime. Yeah. But you were really worried about how it would affect your career. Oh, yeah. And people said to you, do not publish no. this. No, I mean, 2017, 2018, nobody was really talking about abuse. abuse. You know, and I thought, well, you know, this is my story. But actually, it could end my career because it is very, very honest. And, you know, if it wasn't for my mom and, you know, my, my daughter who wrote her own chapter in the book mm -hmm. telling me, you know, Melanie, this is not just happening to you. And if you look at the statistics, 
two or three women get killed every single week by their former partner mm. or their current oh. partner. Mm. So it's an epidemic. Yeah. And I just thought, you know what? I'm going to get my story out there because I know I'm not the only one. So you were shopping this book, and what did nobody wanted to pu publish it? Nobody wanted because to publish of that. It. They yeah, said because it's a taboo, icky topic. But it's a, apparently it's a woman's problem because statistically, it, it, I mean, it happens to men also, but yeah. it happens yeah. to women and more. And I think you know what? Us women need to band together and try and stop this because because in the back of my book I have the 15 signs of what abuse can look like. Yeah, and you know my. My writer that I wrote it with, she put it in front of me and, said, and she said, what's that? And I said, oh, it's a timeline of my marriage. And mm. She was like, no, this is from a charity called Women's Aid and these are the 15 signs of wow. abuse. And I ticked every one. Wow. And I think a lot wow. of people that have read the book before, you know, walk away and they think, oh my God, I've ticked a few of those boxes too. Maybe yeah. I've mm -hmm. been in an, an abusive yeah. relationship. Mm -hmm. And I'm all about educating people, right. educating kids what, what is a healthy relationship yes. and what does it look like. Yes. That's why I'm glad to be patron of Women's Day because I get to spread the message, change a few laws and educate from the inside out, from the judges to the kids. Don't you love that? Change well, a few I laws. Love, Let's well, you, go. Well, yeah, you're an advocate. What about running for political office? Oh, come on. No. Never. <laughs> No. Really? No? <laughs> I'm just going to stay in my lane, being a Spice Girl, and doing what I do, creating awareness for, for domestic abuse. Okay. You're doing I such like that. good work. Oh, I like okay, that. We, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Mel.